I'm a movie guy. I like making movies and I love watching movies. Unfortunately, it's hard for me to get to the movie theater sometimes when I think, gotta think about babysitting and budget and schedules and all that jazz. But fortunately, there's Netflix. Bum, ba, da, ba, bum, bum, bum. So I was browsing through Netflix's popular tab the other day and I came across Hercules with Dwayne Johnson and I was like, that's going on my list. Because I saw that trailer a year ago and it had The Rock in it and I thought, someday when that comes to Netflix, I will watch that. And today is that day. So the idea behind Hercules is that Hercules is just this really, really, really strong mercenary and he has this band of fellow mercenaries that help him pull off stunts and they tell stories about all of his escapades and they you know build up this myth through a lot of exaggeration really the bulk of the film is all about basically how hercules is like batman although instead of a bat cowl he wears a lion's head but there's this point where he comes through like this this cloud and the ears from the lion's head i mean it it's freaking batman or bat herc or Lion Man. It's actually more like the Greek Scorpion Rundown King Rock, but you know, whatever. So Hercules and his mercenaries, they go around and they're scaring away bad guys and killing bad guys for money, you know? So they're, they're not really heroes. Um, they kind of put that, that idea on in order to uh, get money from people that need their help. Um, Hercules has a history of actually being a hero, but he had some traumatic events happen to him that he doesn't even fully understand and the ramifications of that is that he's basically if he ever returns to Athens his hometown he's going to be executed as uh, due to some really really messed up stuff that happened to his family so the basic plot of the movie is that the king of Thrace hires these guys uh, to build up an army to defend his kingdom from what he says is this really bad a divisive guy who's dividing up the land and just throwing it into war. And of course, nothing is what it seems. I don't like being the guy that spoils stuff. So from there, you're on your own in terms of what happens. But you know, there's there's some twists. There's you know the obligatory training montage type scenes, and then the the of course of course the initial failures and successes of these of these guys and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it has the pretty typical ebb and flow of one of these movies, but the movie has an interesting dynamic between two tones. Uh, there's the, there's this kind of this over the top, cheesy electric guitar fanfare, eighties action movie, just experience. And it's just fun set in, you know, you know, ancient Greece. And on the other hand, there's like this really dark and disturbing metaphysical, something's happening uh, to, to Hercules. Maybe it's supernatural, maybe it's not. Um, it, was, it, it was almost like it was trying to be two things at once. And sometimes it was interesting and sometimes it was a little distracting. Um, honestly, um, it kept me uh, a little bit on my toes in kind of a good way, but it was kind of off-putting as well. I mean, it did make me uh, miss some otherwise predictable turns just because of, of how those things were structured and, and how those moments and visions happened. Um, but I don't know, it was just weird. Like there were parts of it that just, it felt weird, it felt off. So here's what I liked about the movie. I liked Dwayne Johnson. I mean, he's the reason that I signed up to watch this. It's like, you got Dwayne Johnson in a movie, chances are I'm gonna watch it. Uh, I just, I really like the guy. Of course, I like his, uh, his physical timing. You know, he's, he's a great performer physically, um, but he also has a really uh, great sense of uh, vulnerability that I think is a little bit surprising for an action, you know, your action movie kind of guy. Um, he always brings a level of humanity uh, and vulnerability to these roles that I really appreciate. I have to say my favorite performance though has got to go to Ian McShane, and he's playing, and I'm, I, I've got it on my phone here, it's Amphirious, Amph I, I don't know how to pronounce that, Amphirious. I looked it up online, I don't trust it, but I think it was Amphirious, Amphirious. You have to say it with an accent almost. He's this guy who has visions of things that are gonna, that, that are gonna, gonna potentially happen. He's part of what creates this question of is everything just a facade and a charade or is there actually some kind of supernatural element going on here um, and at the same time he has this hilarious um, uh, fixation on a vision of how he's going to die 
and I'll, I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's just the, the payoff to it is really great. I really <laughs> appreciated the payoff to his vision of how he was going to die. It was just, it was perfect. A little bit of a negative thing for me uh, was the violence. Um, I went into this understanding it to be a PG-13 film. The violence was insane. It was, I mean, generally with a PG-13 film, you've, you know, it, it, it can be violent, but there's a, there's a restraint that uh, I appreciate. Um, there's more of an artistic nature to the violence because it has to be um, more interpreted than seen. And somehow this film got away with insane amounts of gore. I think there is a bit of a hypocrisy in how we rate our films in that we are so careful to make sure that we don't see a naked body part that's not being hacked apart but clothed people being completely cut apart, well, you know, maybe that's okay in a PG-13 film. I, I'm not saying I want to see naked body parts. I'm just saying um, it, it, I don't understand why we worship violence as much as we do. And I, I'm not opposed to watching a violent movie. Like, I watched Mad Max Fury Road. That's a great movie. It's also rated R. And, you know, and, and, it, and, and in some ways, I think it was, actually, it was actually less violent. Mad Max Fury Road was less violent than Hercules. Like, I don't know how that happened, but it's less gory. All that aside, I enjoyed it. I thought it hit the marks that it aimed for. It had an ending that I didn't anticipate. So I'll just say that. It surprised me. The ending surprised me. I'll just say that. One thing I will say that was very super annoying, it was a very, 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 very predictable subplot. And it's what I call the Han Solo leaves before the Death Star moment. It's like, yes, we know you're coming back and the CGI was pretty bad. So I am going to give this movie a Netflix rating of three out of five stars. I just did that just now. That was, that was live when that happened. Three out of five stars. It was fun, it was enjoyable. There were just a few things that I didn't appreciate and chief among them being the, in my opinion, the misapplied rating. I think that was a, it should have been R. Anyway, there you have it. I'm going to find something else to watch on Netflix now. And uh, in the meantime, if you like my uh, little video here, you can subscribe. Check out the other videos I have on my channel. I have some short films and I have a trailer for a feature film called Mark of the Veil. I'd love for you to check out. Um, anyway, that's what I got for now. We'll see you later. I have no closing catchphrase. i got to work on that. So next time, I'll have a catchphrase. Some inspirational fanfare.